This is Penny, the crazy jewelry lady. I'm sorry that I have been a couple weeks of not doing videos. Um, we've had COVID run through our family. Three of my daughters, my oldest, my middle, and my baby daughter got COVID. And it was a wild couple weeks there. Um, but praise the Lord, me and my husband didn't get it. And a lot more could have gotten it. So, here I am. <laughs> okay. Um, I've got jewelry today. I got This is, like I said, it came from my friend Marie. And she's amazing. She sends me jewelry. And I have not opened this or looked at it or anything like that. And if you see my ring, let me take it off just a second. This is one of those China rings that people say, oh, that isn't real. It's supposed to be cubic zirconia, and it's supposed to be um, gold filled or gold plated. Two bucks. Took a month to get here, but oh well. I can enjoy it for a while. It's supposed to be a wedding ring, so I can look rich for a while. Maybe it won't turn. Okay, today, we're gonna talk about all the stuff going on in America. All these shootings and the school shooting. And then I read today in Alabama, there was the kid, there was 34 kids, I think it was, inside of a school for the summer program. And this man kept trying to knock on all the doors and he ended up trying to take the resource officers gun and he ended up the resource officer had to take him down so that he wouldn't go in there but that was his mission i believe was to get in there and get to those children so we've got a lot to talk about today while we look at our jewelry um yeah i'm sure everyone that's watching this knows about uvalde and the 19 little kids and two adults that were killed there video my husband came out and videoing. So, me to stop? Okay, I'll stop it. Okay, I'm gonna have to blast these two together because my husband came in and I'm like, shh. I had to help him with some bill stuff. Um, we were talking about all these shootings around the world. And I know that it has caused all of us to have more anxiety. It's caused us to have anger. There's a lot of things that we're all feeling and that's why i wanted to talk about this um situation uh what has happened in in, in america so if you want to comment below on how you feel do you feel like the schools are safe now do you feel like it's safe to send your child to school um you know just comment below because it is scary i'm gonna show you some jewelry and we're gonna talk about this all right, this is a stretch bracelet that came in the bag from my friend Marie. I've got to build up my account again to be able to buy more stuff because I haven't made hardly anything lately. I started doing, oh, let me show you this, ties, men's ties because you buy these ties for like 17 cents and you can sell them for 20, 30, $40. And so I got 50 on some of them, like it's Givenchy and things like that. And I get those at the bins and they're in excellent shape or new shape. And so, and I throw away the ones that have, you know, really big problems. So that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to get all these ties listed because just like ties, it's a hit or miss. You've got to find that man or that person um, that wants that color tie. And, but, you know, you've got to have a variety of ties up there before they will sell. So, I've been really working hard. I think I've got 30 up there now. And, you know, like jewelry, which I'll show you some more jewelry. There is a bracelet with the boot. See that boot? That boot's got a heel just like jewelry you have to find that exact person that wants is this is it mickey is it no it's just a little kid's 
bracelet. I bet my granddaughter would like that. I almost saved that one out. So, let's talk about, I'm going to show you the jewelry. You can look at the jewelry and we're going to talk. Let's talk about the shooting. These are beads. Which is the worst school shooting in Texas history. And I believe almost American history. So, it was pretty bad. And just sad. It makes me sad. Part of me wanted to go up there and to just leave flowers. You know, I'd fly all the way up there if I had the money. And I would just go up there just to just to hug the parents and love on them. I'm, I mean, I have my associates in psychology, but it's not like I'm certified to go counsel anybody. But I am certified to go love. You know, just to let them know we're thinking about them. This has words on the back of it, but those are just cute little white, little white earrings, metal earrings. I'll try to put the words up there. I don't know what it says, but I've been watching story after story of story of the kids talking about their encounter. If you see this, let me tell you what that is. My son works for the school and his school uniforms were dirty after he washed them they were still dirty so mama took and scrubbed scrubbed them clean with best i could um in my sink and that's what happened I, that is a a sore of love there so that's where that come from if you were just thinking but i've been watching story after story after story look that's beautiful it's kind of a boho -y necklace about the different some are almost miraculous about the little girl that covered herself and her friends and I'll probably start crying <sighs> um, to try to survive and the teacher that lost their lives and then the teacher that had to see all 11 of his students they were in the room in the room because the other parents had picked their kids up. It was fun day, awards day, the awards, the, you know, the parents were coming and seeing their kids at these awards. And then some parents picked their kids up to come home with them. And I'm sure other parents had to go back to work, you know, and, and it's, it's not their fault. It's not anyone's fault. It's not the gun's fault. It didn't do it. The gun didn't do it. But it's evil. It's just pure evil. And yes, we can blame the 18-year-old child and say, okay, well, you're responsible for this. I think this is premier for this. Then you have to ask yourself, and people may not agree with me, did we fail him? Did somewhere in the system of him trying to get help. Apparently, he didn't get the help he needed. And then it's just evil, you know. Sometimes there's just no answer. You know, you can counsel a person and counsel a person and try to help them and try to help them. And they seem to just resist everything. And you just have to say it's just pure evil. It's better to be mad at someone that just just evil in the world than to always hate the boy that did it because hate will eat you up. Hate will spit you out and throw you out. It will it will find a place in your heart where it will just drain you of all your joy and your peace. You know, it's don't let that hate for the shooter to make you so angry that you can't feel the beautiful joy that that child had brought you. You know, that, that beautiful joy that we're all only loaned our children. And I tell people this, God loans us our children. They're going to return back to heaven and they're going to be his. 
must have become an adult and decide not to believe, you know. But embrace the moment you've had them. Get out those pictures. Get out that baby book. And, and another thing, find friends to talk to. You know, support groups and people that understand your pain. The other parents. There should be a group for all those parents, grandparents, because I love my grandbabies, to all get together and no one can share that pain of theirs. Or even the teacher's family. But no one's going to share that pain like they can. So... If they could all get together and talk about how they're angry and how they've got all this anger built up and why my kid and why did God let this happen? There's going to be a lot of questions that people are going to be asking. But it was the decision of the shooter, not God. He gave us free will. It was the decision of the shooter to do that. And it's just pure evil. Sometimes it's just pure evil that take over people. Sounds like there were a lot of heroic children in there. A lot of, a lot of heroic children that were willing to sacrifice their life to save the others. You know, the, the, the kids on the phone that's calling. And you know that the shooter can hear... But they, 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 took, they took their self out of the equation. And they did what they felt was best for the group. And there's not very many children in this world that will do that. And so those children were very, very special. This is very pretty. It's a cross. Those kids were very special. And don't let this be a stumbling block. But you parents, fight. All of you fight. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, fight for safer schools. Safer schools. Um, tell you a story. That's cute. When my oldest daughter and I've probably told you this before, was in second grade. There was a little second grade boy whose father, I think, is in prison for murder now or something. He would hurt her every day on the playground in a S.A. way, just evil. And she didn't want to go to school. She kept on that whole year. I'd have to kind of almost spank her, honey, to make her go to school, I would take her in the, because I was kin to the custodians, they would hold her down for me while I could get in my car and leave. And I'd call my husband frustrated at work and I would tell him, I just can't do this because I'm seeing fault every single day. I cannot get her to go to school. Well, the school ended and uh, she made it through the year. School ended and that school didn't have a third grade so they had to go be moved to another school in our county for third grade and the teacher called me one day this was the first week of school and she said penny something is wrong you know um your daughter's not acting much she's just something wrong mm -hmm. and so i sat her down on my lap that pretty sat her down on my lap and I asked her, I said, is there somebody that's hurting you at school? Be truthful with your children. Sit them down in your lap. Make sure you've got their attention. Don't talk to them when they're on their cell phones or, or TVs. Sit them on your lap. I don't care how old they are. You sit them on your lap. You let them know that you're listening to them and you're going, you know, you want to listen to them and they want to listen to you. And I asked her, I said, is someone at school hurting you? And she said, yes. There was a little boy that had been hurting her all through second grade, using sticks sometimes at the play, playground when they had to run around to where the teachers couldn't see that far. 
and he got back in her class again that year and he was already starting to taunt her and I had I had the school guidance counselor principal everybody please help me my daughter needs this education it's not fair for that child to get one and not my child to get one so they come up with a solution that my daughter would wear a whistle around her neck and if this child got near her she was to blow the whistle well, he wasn't supposed to be in her, they were supposed to move him out of her class. And lo and behold, he kept getting her. And she was in PE one year and we lived on the school property. My husband was, was the, worked for the school and he was the um, security guard. So we, we, you know, we locked up our stadium every night and we had a double wide trailer there at the school. And so I could see all the kids at the PE ground. And my daughter said she got under a bench and she just kept hollering for me, blowing her whistle. And that boy was coming after her under there the whole time. So this mama pulled her kid out. I had no other choice. And I homeschooled her. She's 32 years old now. But I homeschooled her. But I was angry because, and plus my husband and I have decided to homeschool all of them because it wasn't the only thing that, Every child of mine went through, almost went through something at school. I had a teacher slap, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. I had a teacher in the computer lab when my daughter was in kindergarten, slap her on the hand and she's very sensitive. So I've had to homeschool her ever since because it upset her so bad. That is so beautiful. So beautiful. It says love love that and so after that I went to the superintendent I, I pretty well know everybody in my community the superintendent used to be um, my principal I think in kindergarten so it's like a tight knit family and he said Penny that's just what they they're used to do and back in the when school first started that's how they discipline the children I said yeah but it's really upset my daughter that she slaps her hand and just, I've heard other things about that teacher. So anyhow, we ended up homeschooling our children. But are your kids really safe at school? That's the question. And that's what I want us to talk about is the school safety. Is there protocol? Is there um, things in, in order um, to ensure that your child is being protected? Bullying. That's horrible. I know a school shooting is terrible. It is, and it takes innocent lives of children, but hundreds and thousands of kids every day go to school and are bullied by other students. It's horrific. When I subbed at the junior high, I had about five kids that were being bullied. And I told every class when I would sub, I don't tolerate, I got zero tolerance for bullying, zero. And these little kids, well, they were in sixth and seventh grade, eighth grade, come and eat in my classroom. I know they probably wasn't supposed to, but they take their little tray from the lunchroom and they were so happy to just come in there and eat with me at lunch. And maybe the school can even do that. Open up a little area that kids that don't want, don't feel uh, wanted or loved or whatever in the lunchroom, maybe there's an adult they can come talk to, but they felt free to talk to me. And some of those kids graduated this year. It's got something on the hairs, where it's braided. And anyhow, we're gonna talk about the safety of schools. Not just, you know, shootings and things like that. Should, should one of the personnel carry I want to say this right way, carry protection. Should at least one of the personnel in the school carry protection? And if they did, besides the resource officer, would it have helped? Would it have helped in this situation? The man was bound and determined. He had already shot his grandmother. He was bound, he's actually a kid to me, 18, bound and determined 
to be evil that day. He had something evil on his mind, and I'm not quite sure anything could have stopped him once he got started. There were, oh, there's a, that's pretty. There were um, emails and things that went out to his friends or chats or whatever they guys call it, the messages that hindsight 2020 saw that, you know, well, this was something he was trying to say. But how many of that goes unnoticed every single day? Every single day there's kids that threaten. And I know we have bomb threats and gun shoot up threats at our school all the time and they just put them on lockdown. But are your kids safe in American schools? That is my question today. That is my question today. The next video that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to get it up soon, is where we, where this phrase was coined, don't take candy from a stranger. I'm gonna talk about an abduction, a kidnapping, and that's where that coined was phrased, was from this kidnapping. And I've been studying it, studying it, so I'm going to I was gonna do a whole crime channel, but it looks like y'all enjoy. Please let me know if you enjoy me running my mouth while I'm showing you the the jewelry, because you're still seeing the jewelry. There's something really weird over that. I've been seeing these knots like that. It's just neat. This is just a, something really pretty to wear with, gosh, you could wear that with a lot of different colors. A lot of different colors. Years ago, and I've probably said this before, I have an aunt that I dearly love. And I'm really bold when it comes to people trying to blame things on the Lord. I'm really bold when I feel like they've got it wrong. We should be not just looking at safety school in the school. We, we're not just looking at I think there should be a, a, an older age to buy weapons. I think an 18 year old should not be able to walk in there and buy an AR. What in the world would they have used for that? I mean, why wasn't that flagged somewhere in the sheriff's department or somewhere and he, that child could have been brought in for questioning. But when it all comes down to it, again, it's free will and just pure evil. So we need to fight. I'm about to cut this off. Again, my husband's calling through because he put the money in the bank to pay the bills. <laughs> this is cobalt blue. But I'll tell you a story about my aunt. That's what I was at. And in my 50s, I forget sometimes what I'm even talking about. Her daughter was married to this man. And she was abused her whole married life. She was abused. And right after I had my son, I think they were living in a van and DCF took the children because of the drugs and they were living in a van. So I took in one of the little boys. Um, I don't know how old he was, five or six years old. And me and my husband watched him for probably five or, five or six weeks. We kept him for my aunt because um, I, love, I love my cousins. We grew up together. And she had gotten out of the relationship. She broke free, which is, hallelujah, a miracle. I cannot stand to see battered wives. And she started going to church, her and her mama, big old church in, in Lakeland. And one day he came by and he said, get in the car with me. She thought... There's something green all over it. Something going. Woo! Look at those earrings real quick. Holy moly. Lord have mercy. If y'all want any of this before it goes on my eBay and all, write me. Right on here and send me an email. Um, I think it's Crazy Jewelry Lady 2021 or something. I don't know. It's be down below. So she got in the car 
And he had one thing in his mind. One thing was evil. Evil, evil, evil. He ran into a concrete pole, from what I understand, killing both of them. She didn't take her purse. Her purse was home. She had got her life straightened up. She was getting out of there. She thought in her mind, I'm going to get in the car, and this is going to give me an opportunity to minister to him, to see if I can get him to start, you know, straighten his life up and stuff. So, if, you're, if I'm looking this way, it's because I'm getting messages. So, she got in the car, and we had a double, double funeral, and my church helped with the food and stuff. So those babies, those three kids, were without parents overnight. My aunt come down to my other aunt's house. We all met at my aunt, my, my dad's sister's house. And she come down and she was crying. I love to be there to just hold people when they're going through something like that. I'll tell you the whole story about the tornadoes that my church went to. So... She sat down by me and she said, Penny, because everybody in my family knows I'm a Christian. The devil, she said, Penny, God took my baby. And she said that it's like the, the spirit of the Lord came over me. And I turned around to her and I said, it is bold. I don't even know where it came from. As bold as I could. I said, God did not take your child. Her choice is did. Her choice to get into that car with that guy took her life. This guy, being evil with one thing in mind, took her life. But God did not force her into the car, and he did not force that guy to run into the pole. Too many people think because God can change things that he should. But if he interferes with evil, then he's got to interfere with good. And God wanted a people that had their own free will without doing a whole little sermon here. And I told her, I said, God did not take your child. God didn't take. There's 21 people. He didn't just say, okay, today I'm going to take all these kids and I'm going to take these teachers. He didn't say that. God allowed free will to have its way. And that 18-year-old boy shot his grandmother, got in a truck, wrecked it by the school, runs in because the door's open. And if the door wasn't open, okay, just say that door wasn't open. I don't blame anyone for that door being open. Because if that guy had one thing on his mind, he was going to get in that school if he had to blow the windows out. He was going to hold the gun to a teacher and make her open her window. I'm just saying, when the devil wants in, the enemy wants in, he will find a way. That man with one thing on his mind, and that mind was killing. Now, his bullying probably started when he was that age, is what I'm thinking. And that might be why he targeted that age. I don't know. Maybe it was just that he was there and the kids were there. He just ran into the school because he wanted to kill somebody. But putting blame on anyone is not what needs to happen right now. And I know that the police officers didn't go in as quick as they could. But this is the first time most of them has ever been in a shooting situation. It is the first time that the, the main leader man had ever been in a shooting situation. We don't know what was being, um, what do you call that, communicated back and forth. We don't know. We don't know if the men outside thought that he was done shooting or that he, they didn't know anything. So, although we want to blame the cops, we want to blame the door for being open. Although we want to blame a lot of people. Maybe people not catching that this guy had problems or whatever. But the truth is, the blame went 
on this one person, this 18 year old that took their lives. Then again, don't hate him. That's what you want to do. You want to hate. I forgave that boy that hurt my daughter. And I think even he's in prison now. I forgave him. Because here he was, living with his grandparents. We don't know what he had went through. We don't know what he had saw. And maybe it was just he was acting out what he was, you know, seeing. But the boy's gone. He's gone. He's can never breathe again. And if we sit around, and I'm angry. I'm angry with a lot of things that took place that day. I'm angry. But you have to learn to not let that anger override your other emotions. It's okay to be angry. It's normal to be angry. But please don't let it eat you up inside like a canker. My heart goes out to all the family. My heart goes out to the teachers. My heart goes out to the police officers that had to walk in and see that. No one deserved what happened that day. The children surely didn't deserve it. The teachers didn't deserve it. Parents. It isn't things that you can point fingers and say, this isn't fair. Sometimes life isn't fair. It makes no sense. We have to just be careful with where we place our emotions. All right, this is the crazy jewelry lady, and I'm going to get off here, but I really wanted to come on here and talk about what's going on in the world. And then another, like I said today, a man tried to get into the summer school. So what does parents do? I homeschooled my kids. That might not be the right choice for you. I had an opportunity to do that. My husband was the only one working, and he wanted me to be there to pick up the kids, take them to school. And I had that opportunity, but a lot of you don't. A lot of you have got to work. But I will tell you that there are programs out there, and if you're interested in knowing any of that, and if you live in Florida, we use Florida Unschoolers. I've homeschooled for years. So if that's an option, or you can do like virtual school or an academy, or send your school, your kid to school and pray every day. And I'm, and I'm not saying prayer doesn't work, but that evil was so bad that day that I'm not sure anyone, I'm not saying God couldn't, but I'm not sure anyone could have stopped that man. All right. My heart goes out to Yavaldi, Yavaldo. Sorry if I said it wrong. And my heart goes out to the resource officer today that had to take the man's life that in Alabama that tried to get into the school. You got to think there's everybody's grieving. Everyone, even America, was touched by those 19 kids and the two or three teachers that were shot. I think one man lived. Okay, my heart is with you. All right, thank you for watching the crazy jewelry lady. And like I said, the next video is going to be why was it coined? Do not take candy from a stranger. That was actually a thing that happened during abduction. So, and that's where that came from. So if you like this, if you like this content, I'm probably going to start showing what I've sold on eBay. Just something different. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to just, what do you call that? Change it up. Change it up. But I got more jewelry. And if you enjoy that, please put down below any comments. Let me know if you like this. Um, if you want to just put on there, you're praying for the Texas school. And I don't want to say that word again. So if I'm saying it right, Uvalde, Uvalde. Um, pray for everyone. Pray for the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, the school personnel, everyone Everyone in that school was affected that day. All right. Love you and goodbye.